Hey, it's Kyle, your GM. Uh, just here for a couple of content warnings, because uh, things get a bit hairy in today's episode, and even though there isn't any actual gore, there is a little bit of an implied gore, uh, and I thought that might be worth mentioning. There's also going to be a couple of sections that are going to be pretty difficult on folks who have really sensitive hearing, and so if that's the case and you get to one of those points and you realize it's just too much to handle, remember that we have episode summaries on questfriendspodcast.com. Other than that, I hope you really enjoy the episode, which we're going to play... Now, previously on Quest Friends. Well, in that case, you're going to want one of our Easy Life brands. It doesn't cheat death. You know, if you die by old age, you can't come back. And if if you use it too many times, you're just going to be too tired out to keep using it. I'm going for the guy. I'm like going to like grab him by the shirt. Um, I would I would appreciate that. Otherwise, the, the boss is going to be very upset. And the boss is Fancy Tom. Like that Fancy Tom? Tommy Funbuck? Hey, it's me. Tommy Funbuck. Hope you have fun in my casino. Check out the hotel and win some cash, cash, cash. Well, 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 well yes, fa- fancy Tom wears a hat just like that, sir. Although the seafarer does take a grimy top hat from the pile and loudly proclaims, Look at me, I'm Fancy Tom! Okay, why do you need to go to the roller coaster? At least just taking a moment to watch the roller coaster. Thinking about, as a normal human, how likely Hop would be to survive, because she could probably muscle him into it if she really wanted. Actually, no. Hallie, roll me a d20. <laughs> a two. So you're walking, you're making your way, you're dragging this guy. And as we started out, I'll be like, this better be good. Like, this better be good. Yeah, you're dragging this, and you have some time if you want to look at any of the other documents you picked up. Yes, uh, I want to see if Tommy Funbox is part of the Jagged Dream, because that thug that said that Tommy Funbox was his boss had a Jagged Dream tattoo, so I want to see if they're two separate things, or if Tommy Funbox is actually part of the Jagged Dream, and we have reduced our suspect list. Take a look at it, and you see another dossier on Tommy Funbox? Except this one includes, like, toenail clippings and, like, a waft of armpit. Why are you the way that you are, Kyle? I don't know. (laughs) It includes another very creepy dossier, but it looks like the Jagged Dream is investigating Tommy Funbuck. Oh. So all signs point to no. Oh. Okay. Because now, this is not my question, but I am wondering now if this one dude is... I don't know, like, if he, he's actually just spying on Tommy Funbox and he's not actually... Yeah. Alright, so you make your way to the roller coaster. And give me a roll to see if you make it through all the uh, all the traps. Oh god, okay. Because there, as we mentioned earlier, a few episodes ago, there are a bunch of, like, darts and traps and death traps on your way there. Yeah. <laughs> Hop rolled a seven, which is exactly what he rolled the other time. Ooh, what? I, I, I'm not making this up. I rolled another 19. Woo! So, Hop, you are going to take a number of points equal to how many less than 10 you rolled. So you're going to have to take three might damage. As you just, like, a couple of darts just stick themselves in your neck. Okay. And they have, like, a little bit of, like, poison. <laughs> he's still, like, dragging the other guy. Like, he doesn't want to let him go. So he's just, like, with one hand doing this while trying not to loosen his grip. Okay, and the other guy's fine. G- great. Good for him. And and so you make your way, and from a distance, you start hearing this, like, ranting voice. Where's the other one there? Where is Ash? How is he not back yet? This is ridiculous. I'm gonna turn to Knife Guy. That you? Is that is that you they're expecting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah th- that's, that's me. All right. I need those documents. I shouldn't have left them there in the first place. And all I got out of this was this lousy blueprint. Ah! So we're approaching them now, right? Yeah. You can turn. You can't quite see them yet. Are you going to walk up the steps to confront them, or are you going to wait to the side a little bit? I guess waiting to the side is the more prudent plan. Okay, so he's just going to keep talking a little bit. He's going to say a lot of mean things about Ash, (laughs) who is the the knifehead guy that you're hanging out with. I'm just so frustrated that I went. I went to the trouble of finding Hopscotch Room, and he has nothing for me besides this bloody blueprint and this horrible packet, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm expected to do. And he's just going to rant a little bit, and you see the guy you're holding, he's going to go, He's trying to get out the word boss. Okay, so are they coming around a corner? Uh, no, he's... So you know that, like, little waiting area before a roller coaster? That little, yeah, like, yeah. platform? Yeah. They're inside that platform, and you're kind of, like, right outside the steps. Okay. 
And are they are they exiting at all? Are they moving towards us or are they just hanging out and we're just listening? They're just hanging out there. It seems like everyone went to the parade, so it's it's pretty dead. Okay. So they're like, oh, this is a great place to hang out, especially because there are so many like labyrinths and like ways to go around. All right. Then I'm just going to take the direct approach, I guess. I'm going to like look at Misha and try to do like a, you ready? Expression. Misha is going to nod and say, let's do this, partner. <laughs> Let's do it. And then he's going to drag Ash up with him. Ash doesn't have the stuff you want. I have the stuff you want. I'm going to keep it. And I also want the things that you took back. So you see two mooks. Two mooks. Two mooks. <laughs> on each side of this man in really fancy dressing, who's like dressed a lot fancier than he should be in like this really ratty top hat. And he turns around. And he has a bag of time crisps, and he starts munching them. No! And as he does, you see this top hat oh, no. start to adjust on his face, which has a single eye patch. So it seems like every time he eats the crisps, he's just adjusting his hat. Oh my god. This asshole. And he says, well, 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 look who we have here again. Time for round two. And you don't see Tommy Funbuck, but you see the man. You fought in Charmande, known only as Fancy Tom. Fancy Tom? He's the man be should like hit in the face with a rock. Hit in the eye with a rock, and he has covered that eye with an eye patch. And now he has an eye patch! I love it! Consequences! Oh my god. What a petty villain! Come here to take my other eye! Uh, and one of the guys is like, boss, we told you, it's perfectly fine, it's just a little <laughs> bit red. No, it's not, Daryl. Mm -hmm. Well, 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 looks like I have what you want. You also have what I want, so we're <laughs> basically even. Hopper will, like, cross his arms and be like, it appears we are at an impasse. Well, I suppose there's four of us and two of you, so, I, I, I mean, just give it to us and we should be good. We were outnumbered on the boat, too. No, no, there were three of us and four of you. No, five of you. There were three of us and five of you. So it was like the same situation, but reversed. <laughs> So no, like, we have the numbers now, so I would very much like my papers, please. I remembered that wrong, but it doesn't matter. We're not afraid of you, and I want the stuff. <laughs> and one of the, the, one of the people is going to turn over to Fancy Tom. Why? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, can we, can we pause for a moment? Hi, I'm Daryl. <laughs> Why isn't he our boss? Why are we fighting with him? Uh, and Fancy Tom turns over and says, no, you don't, you, you don't understand. It's very, that's not what I meant by hopscotch, okay? Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Keep talking, Daryl. What, I'm your boss? I and mean, Daryl just looks between you and between Fancy Tom, who's giving him, like, angry eyes. Well, that document, like, you looked at it and you immediately said hopscotch. So isn't, isn't that the boss? He's like, I told you, I told you again, Daryl. No, the boss, that's, that's a different part. It's a different thing, Daryl. Can we have this conversation once we've gathered the documents? I don't know, Fancy Tom. It kind of sounds like Daryl's right and I'm your boss. No, 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 no. You are not, that is not the case. And I want you to roll persuasion. A three. <laughs> you have a six B. If only there was a resource that you had copious amounts of. I'd like to use my copious amounts of XP. Time. Fun fact, remember, do I need to send you a list? Because you can do extreme things with more than one XP. I know. No, I have the Google Doc. I just forget to open it. Like two is an insta success. I'd like to use two for an insta success. Okay, so how are you going to convince uh, Daryl? At great personal cost, Hopper will be like, I'm pretty close with the woman who runs this town. You could say we're friends. <laughs> oh, we're working for Lorraine Styles too? Wow, whoa, everything's changing. Uh, and Fancy Tom just has his head in his hands. All right, well, Julia, you, you at least side with me there. And you see the other mook on his right, a woman, is just like shrugging her shoulders. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what's going on at this point. And Daryl turns over and says, oh, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that guy's our actual boss. Look, I'm just saying that if I'm your boss, which I am, you should report everything that you know to me, such as why you have the blue those blueprints and the packet that have my name on it. Oh, uh, well, why, why do we have that second boss? Fancy Tom's like, it's, I'm not going to explain it to you, Rubes. We just <laughs> need that file from Hop. All right? Just, just go over and take it. 
Hopper sticks it in his pocket. Well, it's it's in his pocket now. Yeah, I mean, it's in his pocket. We can't we can't take it from there. <laughs> Just take the damn documents. I, I want to I want to try and threaten him then. And so can we change the background? Have grab like a, a, like a rock and be like, look, uh, fa- fancy Tom. I am not prone to to harming you humans, but you have seen what happens when I hold small objects like this. So if you do not provide the information that we need, it might be the case that this rock might slip and hit your other eye. <laughs> um, he, he roll me an intimidation. It's going to go super poorly. Seven. All right, he's gonna start walking backwards. Hey, 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 hey! What's the big idea here? All right, I'm. We we, we can all be friends. We can talk about things. Uh, you, you don't need to throw that rock at me. And he starts backpedaling closer and closer to the um, roller coaster tracks. Oh no. You know what? No, we we shouldn't talk about this. In fact, maybe I should just go. And as he says that, he falls back into one of the roller coaster carts that's dropped, that uh, flies by and his cart is just off on the tracks. All right, we're riding the roller coaster. 14, uh, 11. Okay, so his cart is um, going off. All right, you are first in the order. What do you want to do? Oh, well, can I just try and get into the... Like, so he, he grabbed himself to a cart, and then can I use it so that, like, I jumped in that same cart with him? Yeah, I'm going to say you can just... You can jump into it, because you're right next to him. So you jump into it, the cart right next to him, and then what do you do? Yeah, Miss is going to say, uh, it seems you cannot escape us, so it is better that you just give us the information that we want to know. Okay, give me give me, give me me a roll for that intimidation. So you're, you're given a second okay. shot. Uh, 19. I swear to God. What's the minor effect you want to happen? I'm going to say you're intimidating him so that his next turn he doesn't do anything. So what do you want your minor effect to be? I don't know. Can it can it just be that, like, since I was talking intimidating, can it just be that he is actually afraid of the tiny rock that Misha is holding? Yeah. He's going to be like, and he's actually going to bounce. He's going to walk back a little bit and he's going to hit his head <laughs> on the front of the roller coaster and he is going to take two points of might damage. Excellent. Okay, uh, Hop, it is you. What are you going to do? Right. Well, I want to run to it. I would like to try to parkour my way up this roller coaster into that car. (laughs) All right. Give me a roll for that. I am now skilled in parkour, by the way. 17. Damn. All right. How do you get yourself into this roller coaster as it's the last cart is barely leaving as soon as you get onto it? Oh, God. I don't even know. I would like. All right. So I would like to grab onto the cart as it's leaving and then use that momentum to swing myself forward onto the front of the cart. And then is there an ascent right away? Yeah. On the ascent, I am going to jump to the back of that car and then do like a backflip in because I can. All right, and then what is your action? Because that's just your movement. That's just my movement. Um, um, I want to, like, just try to grab Fancy Tom by, like, the scruff, but hold him backwards. Not, like, off the roller coaster, but, like, we're going up so that we're not facing the direction that's up. He would be facing the direction that's up. Okay, give me a roll. Another 17. Hmm. <laughs> All right. You go and lift him there, and he looks like he is going to talk on his turn. And a whole bunch of things happen. Oh, no. Because you're on this roller coaster, you're going up, and you've almost hit the peak, and you're feeling great. And then you remember, you 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 feel something that Ellie knew a few episodes ago, which is that you could last maybe two minutes on this roller coaster. <laughs> oh, that's right. And we're about, I'm not going to say every round is seven seconds, so I'm going to say we're 15 seconds. No, we're thir- I'm going to say we're 30 seconds into those two minutes. Okay. So while Tommy has a turn, before his turn starts, it's the roller coaster's turn. Oh, <laughs> no. God. And I need you, uh, I need you, Hop, to roll strength to make sure you don't get let go of Fancy Tom. No. As you start careening down the incline. 12. You let go. No! Fuck. And he flies back into the last car of the roller coaster and is dangling on. No! And you hear him just go faintly, What's the big idea? (laughs) God, you're the worst. And then Misha, I have a GM intrusion for you. Oh my god, why? Uh, Who do you give your other experience point to? Um, I'm going to give it to Ellie because she didn't lie. 
Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I deserve that. So, as you go down, you hear behind you two voices go, Whoa! And you see in the cart behind you two young individuals wearing all-purpose leather coveralls come, like, with their arms up and they're super excited. One of them, half of her head is partially shaved off. Ooh. And the other one is just this very round-faced young guy. He's probably, like, in his teens. And they're like, whoa, man, this is so awesome. Man, I love this. Have they been on the roller coaster the whole time? They have. Okay. And they're like, dude, isn't this... They turn over their you, Misha. Dude, isn't this the best? We're just going to look at them. Oh, uh, s- s- salutations, sudden humans. I-, I believe this is potentially fun. Yes. Hell yeah, it's fun. It's the most cool thing outside of our home base. The base of the Speedy Speed Boys. What? And you see them make this super cool motion, and they start going through this little monologue, and the one with the shaved head says, I'm Viv. And the one, the round-faced one says, and I'm Baby Jason. And we are the Speedy Speed Boys on vacation. And Viv is like, yeah, no, the boss was totally right, and that this was the coolest place to go. It's totally dangerous and tubular, but also because of the Easy Life brands, and they both show up their hands, and you can see these brightly multicolored bands. The safest pace around! I love it! And Baby Jason is like, yeah, we've died so many times, and we've come back with absolutely no side effects. And at that point, their eyes glaze back, and both of them fall to the ground unconscious. No! 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 And that is your intrusion. No! No, they're not dead. They're just unconscious. They're very woozy. They need they need a lot of rest. Thank God. But they've been going on this roller coaster nonstop. And, and Tommy Phonebook is... Oh, sorry, not Tommy Phonebook. Fancy Tommy's like all the way in the back of the same cart, right? Yeah, he is. He's a few carts back. They're directly behind you. Oh, boy. It is now Fancy Tom's turn. And he's still terrified, so I said he was going to spew things, so he still is. Oh, my God. I just heard a tip that your room was going to have all the information I would need to do to perform a a mild heist, so I just thought I'd go in and get some information myself. A heist? Please elaborate. Absolutely, but uh, could you please help first? Uh, And you can see his hands start to slip. And so now it is your full turn, Misha. Here's the situation. Pop is in front. He is fine. In the second cart are two unconscious members of a gang, I guess, called the Speedy Speed Boys. And then five carts hanging on for dear life is Fancy Tom. And right now, it looks like the roller coaster next turn is going to start sliding horizontally on the wall of Rouletteia itself. Okay. So that's the situation. Uh, I want... God, I guess I wish there was a way that I could pull him in. But I'm thinking one thing that I can do is, I mean, I have my scarf. I can, it's, it's, it's like semi-long. Can I just toss part of the scarf and use it like a rope? And like tell the scarf like to to help. Uh, yeah, you'd probably have to get back to the third cart. Okay, I and then then I guess my action will be trying to go to the third cart. So you go you go to the third cart and you whip out and I want you to roll like I guess speed to make sure it gets to a position where uh, Fancy Tom can grab it. Yes, I, I want to spend one level of effort for that. Let's do this. A twenty. I oh! I, I promise I don't know. I promise I'm not making these rolls up. All right, so Fancy Tom is going to make his way successfully onto the roller coaster, but what else do you want to do? Um, I want... Okay, so he's going to make his way... I, I want to somehow find a way of protecting speedy speed boys so that they don't fling out of the of the cart. Yeah, so you grab it and you fling him back into cart number two, and the scarf automatically wraps itself around, like, the wall of the cart and around him and the two speedy speed boys. Oh, uh, look at it. Look at my scarf. Oh, look at your little, like, nest of, of people there. They're all safe and concern, uh, and, 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 and in good shape. So now, uh, Hop, it is your turn. Okay. Um, well, I guess, well, Fancy Tom is now, like, fine, right? Yeah, he's fine, but you do have a horizontal thing that you and Misha have to deal with. So you can either... Oh, we have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah you're gonna okay. have to deal with it regardless for yourselves. Right, right, right. Um, okay. Um... When we looked through Mako's, like, the basement part of his wagon boat, the cipher that I took 
was a gendarmerie vest where like only one of the things was working. Can I use that? How? I don't know. <laughs> well, you can use it like to Spider-Man swing. So could I use it to just attach it and then attach the vest? And then that way I'll swing back into the cart after. Okay. The roller coaster is coming up and it's turning to its side and everyone is fine except for Misha. So Misha, how are you going to deal with the fact that you could fling off? Hopper is like offering his hand, by the way. Yeah, I would grab it while not letting go of the scarf. Okay, each of you, each of you roll uh, and I'll take whatever the best one is. They can just hold on to each other. 17! All right, so Hop, you go and you grab Misha and describe how you like fly out of the cart and then Spider-Man your way back. Okay, I guess the only way to do it is to hold Misha like on the side, like Spider-Man MJ style. That's just the best way to do it. And as it turns sideways. I assume that the thing is kind of like a dog leash where you can retract it a certain distance and then let it go longer if you want and then pull it back in. So he's not making it go longer. He's making it go pretty short so they don't get too uh, too distant from the cart. So they'll just dingle. It's boring, but it's practical. So he'll just hang out a little bit. All right. So you go, you success- successfully go. But during that time, the uh, scarf wiggles a little bit. No. And you turn over and you see the next part of the track is just made out of grass. Inexcusable. Applicably, grass weave together. <laughs> what? And Fancy Tom starts freaking out. He's like, oh no, oh no, I'm allergic to grass. <laughs> and he starts trying to wiggle his way out of it. And he accidentally wiggles him and the two speedy speed boys off the side of the roller coaster. No! And so it starts to unroll. So the speedy speed boys are now stuck in the scarf. The scarf is attached to the side of the roller coaster. And Fancy Tom is holding onto the bottom of the speedy speed boys. Oh my god. And it, you have now been on the roller coaster for one minute. And I'm going to say for your turns, you two can go in a s- opposite order. You can alternate your turns. Okay. Because this is now at this point, it's less a classical combat and more you get two turns to deal with whatever the doofus brigade has up for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I... So he's at the very bottom, right? Yeah. Because I don't want to kick the other two, but, like, I kind of want to swing out with my vest and then, like... Your vest is broken because it's a it's it's a cipher. So, like, Ooh. probably as soon as it went in, it just, like, went back in a little too uh, strongly and just kind of, like, shattered and, and fell to the ground. That's fine. Misha, you got any... Uh. I'm looking at all my stuff to remind myself that I have things. Can I use a time crisp to go back and make it so that I grab him before he dangles out? Yeah, you can do that. So you eat one of your time crisps. Nom nom nom. And you are back six seconds. You uh, see him turn over. It's kind of like this weird ghostly thing where you can interact but not, right? Right. So he's he's just doing what he automatically would have done otherwise. So you see this like ghostly visage of Fancy Tom turn over and say, Oh no, I'm allergic to grass. In slow-mo now. This is slow-mo time. Okay. And you see him start to wiggle. And Hopper Scotch is like, nope! And um, it's going to tighten that scarf. All right, give me a roll to tighten that scarf. <laughs> it's going to be a little easier because he's... Uh... Slow-mo. A two. No. So time comes back. No. He never took Boy Scouts. He doesn't know how to make a good knot. How did you know that? And Misha, you see that Hop successfully tightened that scarf? Because now you see Speedy Speed Boys, you see Fancy Tom, and you see with his arm tightened into the scarf, right next to Fancy Tom, no. Hopper Scotch is suddenly dangling there too. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the announcement break for episode 27, Quest Friends, Questionable Measures, Part 9? Part 9. I'm Kyle, your very, very tired GM, 
And today, like always, our intro and outro music are Friends and Hitoshio, both by Miracle of Sound. We got a call to action today that's really important to me, uh, and that's to check out the art of Mandy Robertson. Mandy is the person who does basically all of our artwork. She's always super great to work with, super excited, and she has a bunch of amazing projects that uh, she's always working on. So if you really like uh, the official artwork for Quest Friends, the official artwork for the Cookie Crew, Mandy's going to be someone definitely worth checking out. You can find her online at Mighty Meller. Uh, that's just the word Mighty and then M E L L E R. Dot com. You can also find her with that handle on Twitter as well. Reminder that if you tweet or Tumblr out about the show using the hashtag QuestFriends, you'll get added to a name pool, which I'm going to use to name items, locations, NPCs. Our name pool person for today is Osh, is the NPC Osh or Knifehead, named for Dylan Oshier. Oshier? Dylan, I went on a pronunciation website every freaking language had a different pronunciation of your last name. But Dylan O from Twitter is the namesake for Osh. Really appreciate you tweeting about the show and, and trying to encourage other folks to listen in about it. All right, that's all we got for you today. Our next episode is going to be in two weeks on Monday, December 3rd. But until then, you and I got half an episode to listen to. So I'll listen with you now and I'll see you in two weeks. send a message to Shock and, and say I believe the ones that were not fine after all were us <laughs> if something happened to us I just want to say I like you very much can I can I do my response in like the later episode when that happens to us in real time yeah we could do that if you want because I don't know how I want to respond to that right now and then after this they are going to try and um <laughs> they're going to try and and pull them back into the cart somehow like is it i don't i don't know it's just that i don't know what what things i can do like i, I can fling things I, I have a cipher where i think i can manipulate small objects with my shadow but like i don't i don't think with a flashlight but i don't, I don't think i can do anything with that do whatever you want remember you have lots of xp and i also i'm not gonna fucking kill you all for two bad rolls i know i know but Misha doesn't know that. We need to panic, Kyle. Okay, so so I want to just picture like the situation physically. So like they're all <laughs> hanging out of the cart, like like they're they're almost like they're hanging to the side of the cart because the, the scarf is stuck in between everybody, basically, kind of thing. No, the scarf is hanging onto the side of the cart, five feet down. It's wrapped around the speedy speed boys. And then hanging on the bottom of the Speedy Speed Boys. <laughs> oh, it's even worse than I thought. You have Fancy Tom, oh. and then you have Hop. Oh. And Fancy Tom is just holding on, but Hop is very much tied into the scarf. Oh my god, this is even worse than I thought. Oh no. Oh, can I, like, okay, so the scarf is there, can I just, like, try and just, I guess I can use my fling thing, kind of. Like, to grab, like, the, the very edge of the scarf and try to, like, Pull it up so that it's like like a rope, but I guess it's gonna be hard because there's people in it. Yeah. So it's not like it's gonna be that easy. I'm not that strong. Yeah, you're gonna try to wrangle the scarf, and you can successfully get that back. But you gotta figure out. I'm gonna say an int roll to see if you can physics it right to see if you can get it in. Right. I'll I'll do that. I'll try to use physics a thing. I I have I do have edge in intellect, so I am going to spend two levels of effort to try and figure out how to physics. I. Our character do not know how to physics this at all. And I rolled a 10, so... Describe how you get all of them successfully back in the carts. Thank God. I guess after after saying that thing to shock and being like really worried about, about everything and like for a second just thinking that like they were doomed, they're going to think like, no, I, I, we, we cannot end like this.
And so they are going to kind of like get this other strength and like basically just stare for a second at the situation, like stare at all of the three people and do the flingy fling thing so that they all kind of fall. I, I want them all to fall on top of Misha while they are on the card, like to, to physics it right so they're both all on the card but fall on top of, of them. Okay, so they all fall on top of you, and this actually jolts Viv awake. Whoa, man! This track does new things all the time! But Fancy Tom is like, Oh no, but I'm still allergic to grass! And he starts sneezing really bad as you go on top of this grass part of the track and take your final turn to what looks like a massive jump at the entrance of Manny's prosthetic intestine. And you are at 1 minute and 30 seconds. At the same time, I kind of want to explain what's happening to our good uh, friends, the three other Jagged Dream members. At this point, they've lifted up Ash, and they've kind of just sat there, and they've been like, blah, 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 I, 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 should we, I, we, need, we need to help out the boss. I don't know who the boss is at this point. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know who the boss is. Like, who do we help out? And they all just sit there for a couple of seconds. And eventually, I think, what did I name her? Julia. Eventually, the one that I named Julia just says, Hey, do you guys want to go get some pie pots? <laughs> and they're all like, yeah! And they start walking off oh outside of uh, outside of the roller coaster to go get themselves some pie pods. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> all right, and we are back to the roller coaster. There's a massive jump coming on. It's Fancy Tom is just sneezing. This is terrible! And he just starts flailing his arms in a complainy way. <laughs> uh, and I need both of you to roll speed defense as he just flails his god. arms upset. <laughs> Nine. One. Oh no! Oh! Miraculously, it does damage to Misha. No, it doesn't do any damage. He is flailing. But it confuses Misha so much that they will be distracted <laughs> on their turn. I like that. Because they're just like, what the? What is he doing? Is this an attack? Are humans supposed to move like this? <laughs> or is yeah. he throwing a tantrum? I wonder if this is what grass allergies does to humans. But... It gets worse, because you actually don't get that penalty, because instead, I'm going to give you a GM intrusion, but for free. Ooh. So you don't give that XP to somebody else, because you rolled a one, so you get this intrusion for free. Oh my god. Suddenly, out of nowhere, your vision, everything around you starts to get this harsh red tint, and you get filled inexplicably with this giant, horrendous, terrible, righteous fury. You see that the four of them, this man that so terribly attacked you, these two thrill-seeking thieves, and this arrogant, hubris-filled man who thinks he can control what he wants, you see all four of them, and you see yourself pick them up in the scarf and throw them easily outside of the roller coaster and you see them do this and you see it again and again and every time this voice in the back of your mind makes you feel more excited and more energetic and you just you see them hit the ground hit the ground hit the ground hit the ground and you see them split and you are filled with such happiness and then you jump back to the moment when you're still underneath all of them and it is your turn to choose what you are going to do. So I recall that we are allowed to mentally jump in at any point, like like with our mental connection. I decided that Shock, for whatever reason, I suppose we'll figure it out later, didn't or couldn't respond to Misha's message right away. And so now Shock happens to message Misha and he says, Misha Jarvis, you're really important to me too. And I don't know, I don't really know how to say this because this is all weird and new and strange for me. But I just wanted to let you know, I'll always be there for you. I don't care what happened in your past or anything else. I, I know that, you know, if, if we work together, we can, we can work through any of that. You, you mean a lot to me. That's the last thing you hear. And that message is cut off by a weird otherworldly scream coming both from your mouth but also coming from Shock's side. So yeah, they're, they're going to in turn look at, at every single person and, you know, try to, like, try to fight this that they really, really want to do. 
but I want I wanted to like right before they like maybe start grabbing for for something like for their scarf or something that like that's when shocks picks and that's when, when he screams or when they scream and instead of doing that I want to use my shock to the system thing and maybe hit fancy Tom or hit somebody you can decide who I hit with it but like instead of doing the thing to try and like accidentally just like channel it through that because like what what the thing does is that it fills people it fills a targeted creature with images what is it uh, flood the mind of a target within short range with disturbing images and ideas a target targets faint and collapse to the ground remaining unconscious for two rounds so I'm thinking that maybe they can accidentally transfer that as they are trying to fight it but if, if that's reaching out too much. No, that's fine. This voice doesn't want you to do it. It doesn't want you to do this. You have to fight it. Tom and Ari, each roll me a d20. And I'm going to add your scores together. I'm sorry, I rolled, I rolled a six. Can I spend my two XP remaining on this? Or would that, would that not be applicable here? You can, but you still need to roll. If I may justify my 2 XP here, I want to like somehow through mental connection or just through memory bring a tune to mind for Misha, no. like like humming a tune no. in their mind. Don't do this thing. <laughs> I don't know what tune Shock chooses, and <laughs> we use the heart of the cards. <laughs> An eleven. You get overwhelmed, Misha, with these images. All these bloodied, battered faces. The roar of a thousand different vehicles. You hear the screech as the man in Charmande gets crushed by the gears. You hear this anger, this possessiveness, this mine, mine, mine. And all of it starts to fade away for a second. And you find yourself in this empty void. In front of you, you see the bottom side of this massive, still, ceramic-like dress that looks like it's mid-flowing, and above you, a similarly colored white hand starts to reach down towards you. And that's when you hear the tune from Shock. Mm -hmm. And your mind starts to drift away from this void as the figure disappears and the images of the area start to come back. And you're back, as normal, in this cart. And Fancy Tom is just, plump on the ground right in front of you. He's just out. He's very much out of commission. And as you do that, over the course of those 30 or so seconds, the roller coaster starts to rumble and it leaps off the side of the jump and you just hear doo -doo -doo, three thuds as the roller coaster veers off course crashes into the ground at exactly the two minute mark and you see the three jagged dream members on the <laughs> ground nursing their heads where they presumably got hit by the cart i love it and we're out of initiative <laughs> okay, so to clarify, Fancy Tom is now unconscious. Fancy Tom is now unconscious, and his the little like the little packet he was holding, uh, he had a little packet. Uh, the packet and blueprints—they're two separate things. Slide off towards your feet. Okay, but was him unconscious due to Misha? Yes. Okay, so what did Hop see? Hop saw Misha just start kind of like shaking around violently, and you saw both of Misha's eyes go red. Oh no. And then suddenly, you just heard like a scream, and then you heard Fancy Tom go, All the grass! <laughs> and just get overwhelmed and start sneezing convulsively till he anxiety sneezed himself unconscious. Oh my god, okay. And you're, you're out, so he's on the ground, and uh, you're over there seeing that. And Misha, meanwhile, as you kind of like look around and get up, you see the two uh, speedy speed boys pop up and be like, that was so cool! That was tubular! Let's do it again! Baby Jason looks down to you and is like, You should visit our gang in the beyond! <laughs> and Viv says, Yeah, totally. You would make an excellent speedy speed boy. Uh, and at that, that little bit of fury rises back up again before subsiding. 
Now I have a question. Would Misha remember th that this happened or would it be like a blank? Like... Misha would remember it. All right. In that case, then Misha is going to kind of stay put without moving, like kind of staring blankly in front of them and like breathing kind of heavily. Hop is going to gather the documents that fell at his feet, but just like cram them into his pocket again and then go over to Misha and say, Misha, Misha, what happened? Are you okay? Uh, Misha's going to recoil uh, when, when, when Hop appears and um, they're like, when they look at, at, at Hop, they are going to like back away a little bit like it might seem that they are scared of hop but they're not like if they're actually scared of like what they thought they wanted to do to hop and they're going to like just back away uh, while, while looking at at him like with little panic panic ways and they're not going to answer right away they're going to kind of just shake their head a bit seeing misha back away he's not following because he's respecting that misha wants to put distance but hopper does think like misha's afraid of him and he doesn't quite he doesn't know why misha what What's wrong? Misha is just going to shake shake their head and, and say, "So the, the you got the the, the blueprints. You, you got them, right? Right, Simon Scotch. That we we solved it, right? Like they're going to like try to diverge. Yeah, he'll like glance out of his pocket, like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I I got it. But we've already had to leave friends today, so if something is wrong, I'd rather take care of that first than this. What? What, what 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 did you what what did you see? Both your eyes went red, and you looked really mad. I don't know if I can discuss this. I uh, I I I I apologize. I, I apologize, Scotch. I, I I am not fine, but I, I I don't know if I can address it. I I my apologies is not. Uh, Hopper is shaking his head. No 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 need to apologize. I just want to make sure you're okay. I do not believe. I am, but I will do my best to be and just look at, at, at the hop and say, I would advise you to not step close to me for for some time. I, I, I will still follow, but just not, not as be as, as, as close. Hopper, a brief flash of hurt goes across his face. Oh, no. And then... No, that's not what I wanted. He's, um, um, he'll say, okay, Misha, but I, I trust you. I want you to know that. I, I know it, it is true, but I, I do not trust myself. I, 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 I want to clarify that I like you and this is why I want you to be careful. Hopper will kind of shrug and smile a little bit. Misha, do whatever is best for you, but that picky promise we made goes both ways. <laughs> Feelies! Misha is going to nod and say, Thank you, Simon Scotch. I know this, and I suppose I can trust you with this, but you need to promise me that you're not going to be scared. And they're going to, like, extend their, their pinky. Yeah, Hopper extends his pinky back and smiles and says, never. Misha Tara is going to, like, take a deep breath and say, For, for a second there in the cart, I, I, I thought of, I, I thought really bad things about, about everybody, about you, about everybody, and, and thought, and thought, like, I should, I, I wanted to, to, and, and then Misha, like, can, cannot, like, get themselves to say it, so they're going to, like, make a motion of, like, like pushing motion. Oh. And, 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 and I, I do, I do apologize, I do not, I do not really feel that, I don't, I don't know why I felt that, and I almost did it, and I, I, I didn't, and I, I think, I, I, I don't, I don't know, I, I, I want you to, to believe that I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Well, you didn't. But I almost, I, I almost did. And maybe next time, if, if there's a next time, what if, what if I do? We'll be there. Misha, I don't know what's going on. And you don't have to go into more detail if you don't want to. I, I just wanted to let you know that we'll figure it out. But what, what, what if next time... We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's worth the risk. Misha is going to kind of nod, but half-heartedly. Like, they don't really think that. Si Simon, Simon Scotch, would you promise if... If it seems that the bridge can't be crossed, that you will protect yourselves. <sighs> no. <sighs> and they're going to stay, extend their pinky one last time. How did this get so sad? No. <laughs> I don't know. You're extending the pinky. <laughs> if if it if it comes to it, I I do not want to hurt you. Hopper 
will give Misha a skeptical look and then extend his pinky and he'll say, sure, Misha, but he's crossing his other fingers behind his back. Yes, Hopper lies. So many angsty lies. What are these lies? So much of it was so silly. We just got off a roller coaster. We How did a, this happen? We had a murder clown car earlier. <laughs> we had the world's most ineffective like, jagged dream numbers. Like, I feel like the thing that, that fucks up my head the most is that we went off of that, like, the horror of, of Misha's, like, episode into the the overwhelming negative feelings that break uh, Fancy Tom's brain. Are <laughs> And he sneezes himself to unconsciousness. Jesus Christ. I, and I'm not saying that in a bad way, but Whiplash is just really fucking with me in a good way, but also not because holy shit. All right, let's resolve this horrible lie. <laughs> All right, after this, no problem, Misha. All right, let's get down to business. You take a look at what you've got. And so one thing you have is you have a much more thorough and honestly professionally put together blueprint of like the facility. You can see all the back rooms. You can see that main uh, exhibit exhibition hall. And then you see the uh, auction hall to the right. You see a much more thorough list of like when all the things are getting auctioned off. And instead of mystery item, it does say Cubo. And then you see this packet that he has and you open it up and you start to get an idea now why they accidentally thought you were the boss because of what it says on this packet. So you see a little uh, post-it note. I'm going to call it a paste-it note. That's the ninth world, a paste-it paste note. It. And Love it, it says, uh, shopping lists. You see easy life. You see the Argent. And then you see in all caps, this thing. And an arrow pointing downwards to this fancily written note, which says, Come to the land of tomorrow and win your personalized mystery prize today. And as you read this, two slightly humming pearls fall out of the packet. And at the bottom, it just says, Won't you play it with me? Won't you play hopscotch? Um, um, <laughs> fuck you, Tom. We're here to escape your um, feelings. Holly, you okay? Yeah. Oh my god, it's fine. <sighs> This is fine. 